hi there. It's uh, my second time here in Bulgaria. I'm actually really excited to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me one more time. Where is Buriana? Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, the city is amazing. The people are amazing. I love to be here. Uh, so let's get started. We have a lot of uh, content to cover. I'm going to show you some cool stuff and some Excel magic. It's going to be exciting. But let's see. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, before we start, just to break the ice, you know, and to give you some nice presents, a small trivia. I have five questions. I have five notebooks like this. Excel notebooks, Office notebooks, green one, right? So it's a mix of Excel and Office. Uh, a winner will get a notebook after a session, right? So the first question, yeah, a couple of small interesting questions about Excel. Which automaker produced a car titled Excel? Yeah, you're welcome to participate. <laughs> Any guesses? Hyundai, right. We have the first winner. How did you know? Where is the winner? Did you have uh, an Excel car from Hyundai? <laughs> OK. Amazing. Second question, guys. Excel is a Roman num numeral. What, what does it mean? 40. 40. Who said 40? Great. You are the winner of a second notebook. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, third question. The word Excel is derived from Latin. What does it mean? Almost. Any other guesses? To rise. Who said to rise? Great. Congratulations to the third winner. Excel wasn't always named Excel when it was launched back in 1982. What was its name? None of the above. Yeah. No. I can't hear you. What? Multiplan, right. <laughs> you need to, to, to speak louder, right? Otherwise, you won't mean. So the last question, the very last question. Let's see. How many keyboard shortcuts are there in Excel? You all use? Oh, no, I don't want answers from MVPs. <laughs> Thank you. No answers from this box. More than 500, great. Thank you. Enjoy the notebook. Well, now I think we are ready, right? We are ready to start. So before I show you a couple of demos, I need to tell a story, right? People love stories. So why uh, are we doing all this stuff in Excel? In a nutshell, uh, one of the reasons, one of the challenges that you all encounter during your day-to-day -day job is the explosion of data, right? We, uh, like during the last years, we're collecting huge amounts of data, right? We're collecting like endless finance information, endless logs, uh, endless usage data, and we need to navigate somehow in this data and produce results fast, right? This is a challenge. And the second challenge that we're all dealing with, that you are all dealing with, guys, uh, is that despite of the fact that you have a lot of data, your bosses want your, your reports to be, to be ready today, right? It doesn't matter what the amount of data, how many rows you have in your data, you all need to produce your reports and dashboards today, because tomorrow your managers have a presentation to their bosses, and so on and so forth. And today we will show you how Excel helps you to achieve and address those goals with a couple of, of interesting and important and cool features, which I like to, uh, to put in two buckets. The first bucket is insights. I'll show you how Excel helps you to produce cool insights really fast. And the second bucket is called collaborate. So, uh, I mean, as I mentioned, you all need to produce results fast, right? And it's a challenge. And uh, how would you usually address this? Uh, one option is to stop sleeping at night and work 24-7, right? I'm pretty sure there are a couple of people here in the audience who do this. Uh, but an easy option will be just to collaborate and work together with your colleagues and then hopefully finish certain, a certain task, a certain problem, a certain issue together. So let's get going. Uh, we have a bunch of cool demos in the insights bucket and the collaboration bucket. And the first demo uh, will be presented by Siddharth. Thank you, Guy. Hey. Do people at the back can see this clearly? Yes? This means yes, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay. So a lot of time we have this kind of data where uh, 
you want to get a sense of what are the insights from this, this is data of sales. But uh, it's hard to do that just by looking at this data, right? Like, what does this mean? It has like few categories, probably products, but nobody knows what insights are there. And uh, what I typically do is there's a recently launched feature called Ideas. So it's just a one button click. And uh, what this does in the background is it gets your data to Azure services and gets interesting patterns out of it. So you can see there are already uh, pivot charts, tables, uh, as part of the insights. Uh, if you look closely, you will also see, hopefully you can see, yeah. There are time series chart, there is correlation charts, there is also a bunch of uh, outlier analysis that this particular feature gives you. Now obviously if you were to go and do this analysis by yourself, it's going to be very hard, right? It's going to take you a lot of time. But with, this, with ideas, it's just a one button click away. You can see that there is an interesting insight that accessories uh, as a category has like the highest sales in uh, no noticeably higher sales than other categories. So at this point of time, what happens is you probably have more questions about your data, like what percentage of uh, 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 sales come from accessories, let's say. So how would you do that today? Anybody? Nobody? You probably use sort filter, pivot tables. But that's like a long route, right? What if you could just ask this question to your data? So now with Excel, you can do this. Uh, you can see this uh, text box. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask the question that I asked you, all of you right now. And hopefully, it'll give me the result. So I'll just ask what percentage of sales come from category accessories. And you see it also autofills. Uh, values from data. Now, this is very helpful when you have like a long text in, in a particular column. And I hit Enter. And there it is. Yep. So not only it gives me the percentage for accessories, it also gives me data about the other categories as well. Now you might think that, OK, this is a very simple one. What if I want to see the percentage of sales for all categories across the years, because that's how you want to see the trend. You can do that too. So you can just type, what are the sales for each category over the years? Yeah, and that's the result. So let me just insert this pivot chart. So all you need to do to get this data back into Excel is one click option for insert pivot chart. And it will give you the chart right into your Excel sheet. So you can see accessories uh, has been growing over the past uh, several years. Now, the interesting thing is I don't want to type this whole sentence of what are the sales for each category over the years. I expect it to be more uh, intelligent. So what I can do is I can just type sales by category over time. And it'll give me the same result. OK. No reactions. <laughs> but <laughs> so it basically, AI understands whatever you're uh, asking, and uh, you don't have to uh, categorically type in, in a particular format. You can just type in the natural way you want. What I'll do is I'll also show you what are the products. Let me, let's say if I have a question about what are the products in this particular category. So I can ask that. How many products? Oops. Are there in accessories? Now I'm lazy. I'm not typing category again and again, but it still understands that. So I got the result six. Now uh, let's say I want to see which is the best selling product among this. So I'll just ask that. What is the best selling product in accessories? And it shows me tubes and tires. So with ideas and natural language, you just have to tell what are you looking for in the data. The how part of it will be taken care of by Excel, doing all the calculations in the back end, and also showing you the results in form of graphs and tables. Uh, again, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, again, I want, I want you to put, an, uh, uh, to put an attention that the question was asked in a natural way, right? We are not writing any SQL statements or whatever. 
We're just like asking questions the way I talk to you, right? So this is amazing. It is, it is powered by uh, Azure Natural Language Service, which understands and analyzes the questions that you ask and knows how to provide the answers. So this is great. Uh, let's move on to the second demo, which is Office Scripts. How many of you are using VBA? That's it? Well, <laughs> macros, VBA. Yeah. We have, yeah, we have decent numbers of people who use VBA. So, let me just switch over here. This is awesome. So, uh, as you all know, VBA is a scripting language that exists uh, on Win32 and uh, on Mac for ages. This is what you usually do to, to automate your task and do a bunch of, of other stuff, and this is what MVPs do for a living. Uh, What's the problem with VBA? It runs only on Win32 and it runs only on Mac, right? But today we have other platforms, we have other endpoints like mobile and uh, Excel for the web. And what happens if you want to run and create a macro over there? Well, it's not supported. And for this, we invented the next generation of Office scripting language. It's called Office APIs. You can go to Bing.com. Well, how many of you know what is Bing.com? No, I'm just kidding. You can go to Bing.com or to Google.com and search for Office APIs. And there you will see tutorials how to get started with writing uh, your, uh, uh, your new functions using Office APIs. In a nutshell, it's a JavaScript-based language. And since it's JavaScript, it runs on all platforms. And you can use modern development tools like Visual Studio. And, and you can easily debug it. And well, using Visual Studio is much better than using the old VBA editor. right? So, but one of the things that was missing, uh, I mean, up until today, uh, when it comes to Office APIs, is an ability to record a macro, to create like macro recording, right? You're familiar with macro recording in Win32, to record a macro with Office APIs. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, this feature, how it works in Excel Online, right? It's important to understand that uh, it's an earlier release of this feature, and you will see more improvements as we go. So uh, this is Excel Online. By the way, how many of you are using Excel Online? I'm just curious. Great, this is cool, yeah. Uh, Excel Online is uh, the next generation of Excel. Well, if you have it in your organization, you don't need to care about updates, about running on the latest version. It's a familiar interface. You always have the latest and greatest version of Excel. All the new features that we release will be released in Excel Online first. We see it as the next, the next generation of, of Excel, as I said. But let's show you uh, how the macro recording in JavaScript works. So you just go to uh, automate tab and I click record action and let's say that I would like to add a couple of values to create an office inventory so I have an item and I have an amount amount and let's say that I have uh, 10 markers in my office and I have uh, 20 staplers and I have 30 pence and you already see that Everything that I do is being recorded on the right, right? All the actions that I do are being recorded. I will turn this into a table. And this step was recorded as well. And now I will insert a nice pie chart. Yeah, amazing pie charts. Yeah, we all love pie charts. And so everything was recorded. I can stop the recording now and save the script. I won't do it now because I have a recording that I prepared in advance. So I will, I'm just going to remove everything now, all the data that I created. And let's see the script that, was pre that I previously recorded and saved here for your convenience. We'll need to wait a couple of seconds because the beats are slow today. And this is how it looks. This is a script that was recorded, right? It's a JavaScript. Office API based script, right? And we try to be smart and we had some cool comments for you like, hey, this is where we had the column and this is where we had the chart. And this, is a, this was created automatically. I didn't edit the script later on. So let's run this script and hopefully it will work. Yeah, great. It's awesome. It works. <laughs> cool. So you can then use. Once you create a recording of your own, you can use the JavaScript that was recorded as a skeleton to start in creating your own logic, right? your own business logic, and adjust the script 
to answer the needs of your business. Cool. Let's move on. <laughs> Yeah, it works. The macros that was recorded will run on Win32, on Mac, on mobile. It will actually run ev uh, anywhere. And this is the power of, uh, of JavaScript-based Office APIs. Will it, work on it will work on the desktop, yes. We'll have uh, more time for questions and answers shortly. Uh, let's move on. Oh, cool. XLOOKUP and Dynamic Arrays. How many of you are familiar with VLOOKUP? Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. How many of you love VLOOKUP? Oh, how many of you hate VLOOKUP? <laughs> well, it's almost like the relationship with my wife, right? We kind of <laughs> love and hate each other, but it's a topic for a separate conversation, right? I can do a, se a separate session about this. I will show you how XLOOKUP works, and, and I will explain you about the power of XLOOKUP. So yeah, there are a lot of disadvantages when it comes to XLOOKUP. Uh, I mean, you name it, the fact that by default it's an approximate match instead of an exact match, and you, and you always go with the default and that you get the wrong results. And the fact that when you specify the columns and you need to return, it's an index column, right? Like I would like to return set column from to the left, right? Well, your left over there, yeah. Uh, and if you insert a new column, your formula is being broken and you need to adjust it, and so on and so forth. It searches only for the Smaller value, right? It doesn't know how to search for the larger value. So we, ha we had all this feedback for you from years, and uh, hopefully we addressed it with a new XLOOKUP function. So XLOOKUP is, as I said, it's the next generation of VLOOKUP. It also replaces an HLOOKUP for you, and I'll show you how it works. So I have some sales data here in front of me, and let's say that I would like to return a sales amount for this particular invoice. How shall I do it? XLOOKUP. What I'm searching for, I'm searching for this invoice. Where? Well, I'm searching in this column. And what is it that I want to return? I just want to return a sales information, sales amount. Uh, uh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Great. And I got the result. So again, I want to put your, to, I want you to put in attention how simple this formula looks, right? What am I searching for? Where and what is it that I'm returning? So no relative references, nothing will break your formula. You specify the exact thing that you're looking for and the exact thing, exact cell that you would like to return, and it's done. Let's see a couple of things, uh, a couple of other cool examples. So let's, uh, let's say that I would like to find the lowest sales record. How shall I do it? I mean, in other words, I just want to find the sales record with an amount of sales greater than zero. How would you do it with VLOOKUP? Well, it's kind of impossible, but I'll show you how you do it with XLOOKUP. And you will help me, right? So I just start typing, as I did before, XLOOKUP. And I'm searching for this value. Why I'm searching for this amount? In a column of sales, right? What is it that I want to return? In my case, I just want to return the entire table. This is something new. It's called dynamic arrays, and I will explain you shortly how it works. The next parameter is what happens if the value was not found. Let's just keep it. And the next parameter, what I'm looking for, am I looking for an exact match or the next smaller value or the next larger value? Next larger value. That's, that's great. Yeah. So the next parameter should be 1. And you see that I got the result. It's interesting because I, I asked to return an entire table, right? And what you see is called dynamic arrays. In other words, every formula in Excel today can result in an array, okay? So how do you work so far? You type a formula and it results in a value. You go to an Excel and you type another formula and it results in another value. And so if you need 100 cells, you type 100 formulas and you have 100 values. Well, no more. Right? It's all taking time, it's all inconvenient. Every formula in Excel today can spill and can occupy, uh, occupy more than one cell. You can see it uh, that uh, this particular formula returns an array because it has like a, a light blue border, right? And this way you know that this, is a, a, that this formula returns an array. So also if you look at the next cells, the formula only is at the first cell, right? If you go to the next cell, 
the formula is kind of disabled. It means that, hey, the formula is taken from the fast, from the fast cell, right to the left. And so uh, dynamics already know how to spill and now, how, now know how to expand if there is a an overlap between the dynamic array range and a certain value, then you will get a spill error. I believe you have a more deep dive later on, a dedicated session about dynamic arrays and the power of dynamic arrays. So you, you, will, have, you will learn more about it. Together with dynamic arrays, we introduce several cool functions which help you to leverage the power of dynamic arrays. I just want to show you a couple of, of nice functions. So let's say that I have a sales information here and I want to produce a unique list of products. So doing it today with existing tools is a little bit difficult. You will probably use VBA, but we introduced a new unique function, not a unichar function, unique function. And so I just specify product name. And here we go. I got a list, a unique list of products, and it's kind of cool. Right? And so if, you, if I will add a new product to this table, the dynamic array will spill. And you can see that this is a dynamic array since you have a nice blue border, right? Another cool function that I want to show you is sort. So let's say that I would like to, to sort my sales by sales in, by sales data. So what is it that I'm sorting? I'm just sorting my sales table. And what column I would like to use to, for sorting? It's one, two, three, four, five. Column number five, which is sales. And here we go. I have an entire table returned to me. And you can see that it's sorted. Almost. One, two, three, four, five. What happened here? Well, a small technical difficulty. We'll figure it out later. It is sorted. Sorry? It is sorted. It is sorted. Oh, yeah, it is sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I looked at this column and not at that column. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> we have a couple of minutes for questions. So, questions. You're all excited, right? I'm excited, so, yeah. Well, there is a way to reference the values of the dynamic array. I believe we will land it in a deep dive session. Yeah. Another question. Yes, please. I actually have two, so I'll try to speak louder. OK. Uh, I have one favorite uh, way to visualize it. Can you do a script? Yeah. No Python yet. Yeah. Thank you. I encourage you to go to user voice and vote for the Python idea. Continue voting, and the day will come, and, and we will figure it out. <laughs> yeah, uh, great question. If, uh, the question was if you keep Visual Basic. So yeah, the answer is yes, we are keeping Visual Basic. We're not going to deprecate it. Having said that, we kind of don't want to invest too much in Visual Basic because we consider Office APIs as the next generation. But uh, Visual Basic will continue working for you, right? We are not deprecating it. We are not taking it away. So if you want to write your scripts and VBA is fine for you and you're writing uh, your custom functions or your, or your ideas only for Win32 or for Mac, please continue using VBA again if this is what you want to do. And it will continue working for you as it works today. Yeah. Yeah, you are. So the question was whether uh, ideas with natural language can work with more complex data and more complex questions. Well, I encourage you to try, right? Uh, again, it's uh, uh, this service and the natural language capabilities are powered by. Uh, artificial intelligence Azure and natural language Azure services, they are powerful. You can achieve a lot, and I believe you will get what you want, what you're trying to achieve. Having said that, there are certain limit, uh, limitations, right? There are always limitations. So I believe you will find some cases where it doesn't work, but it doesn't mean that it won't work like a couple of months from now. We're constantly learning and improving, and, and the technology gets better and better. Yeah. Yeah, think of ideas as a starting point for your analysis. This is, this is what I want to tell you. Like, usually when you start analyzing your data, you want to start feeling your data, to get a sense of your data, right? 
and you will start like finding some, some trends and some patterns and some outliers just to get a sense of your data. And this is where Ideas helps you, to sa helps you and saves you a lot of time. You just run Ideas, and Ideas automatically produce, produces some insights. It finds trends, it finds outliers for you. And this is a great point to start your analysis. One more question, and then we need to continue. Oh, this is great. Here we go. I prepared the slide in advance. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, dynamic arrays is already released. The other functionalities that you saw that you saw are available for Office Insiders. How many of you are familiar with Office Insiders? Just a couple. So Office Insiders is a Microsoft program. You can join this Microsoft Microsoft program to get an earlier preview of all the functionality that we are, that we are that we want and we and and uh, and. Uh, uh, we will be releasing to the, to the public, right? So it's really useful for you, it's really useful for IT people, it's really use, useful for anyone who wants to get access to any functionality that we are going to release in Excel and get a sense and try it in action. So I encourage you to, also to join the Office Insiders program. You will have links later on how to join it, or you can go to bing.com, right? Only to bing.com and search for Office Insiders. Uh, joining Office Insiders program is really simple, and I encourage you to do it. We, we, sh we should continue, and we have more uh, time for questions later on. So the next bucket is all about collaboration. And uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's, uh, it, is, it is all about helping you and, and, uh, and uh, uh, making sure that you will achieve your results faster. Right? So, the first feature that we are going to talk about is co-auth and comments and mentions. And I want to ask you how many of you are working together on the same document or, or trying to, to work together on the same document. Yeah, this is great. This is amazing, actually. I like it. What happened just a couple of years ago when you tried to work on the same document together? Well, you got a nice, like, if someone opened a document on, on, on his machine and you tried to open the same document, you got a nice message saying, hey, this workbook is locked, and then you would go to the machine of that person, and you would shut down the machine of that person, right? <laughs> and then that person will come back from lunch, and, and you will start fighting, right? And, and I mean, for the sake of, of, a, of a worldwide peace and, and, and to promote good relationships between, uh, between you, between colleagues and workers in the same organization, we came with a feature that is called co-auth comments and mentions, and it enables you to work together on the same document, and this is exciting and amazing. And Siddharth will show you shortly how it works. Go ahead. Yep. So I saw a lot of hands go up when you said uh, you work together in the same documents. So a lot of times we have reports or even base data that we kind of uh, want to work or share with colleagues, and probably they update some values, and you update some values. And that's how the final report gets out to your boss, and hopefully he's happy. But uh, this is a data, let's say Alex, uh, I can see I'm on this data. I can also see there is uh, one of my other colleagues called Alex. So you can go to the collab corner. This is what is called the collab corner. And you can see who all are the different uh, people who are currently also in this workbook. So you can uh, go to the location of Alex. Or you can also go ahead and join a group chat for uh, with the other participants that are currently in this workbook. So think about this as uh, you know, something, some fire is going on, and your boss needs to update the report like in one hour, and five of your colleagues are working together in the same sheet. How do you collaborate? Let's say the best way to do is it directly inside the workbook. This could, because your teams could be like geographically distributed. It could be one person could be in USA, one person could be in India, hopefully somebody in Bulgaria. So. Also, you can see that uh, when my colleague starts editing, I can see that he's editing that particular value. And I can see those dancing dots. Hopefully, you can see it too. Yeah. So also what happens is uh, sometimes the time zones are very different. Like for USA and India, I typically go to sleep when they wake up. So it's very difficult to do this like live collaboration kind of thing. So what you can also do is you can uh, at mention somebody in a comment. So Today, uh, you can see comments in the review tab. So you can go and show comments. And you can see a bunch of people have actually commented. What you can also do is you can create a new comment. And let's say you can at mention one of your colleagues. 
So I can go ahead and add mention uh, Alex. And what this will do is, uh, this will send an email notification to Alex that, hey, uh, Pradeep, uh, your colleague has at mentioned you in this particular notebook. And when he opens that, he will kind of see uh, the same workbook with the same uh, comment in that particular context. So you can see that uh, Alex has at mentioned me already over here. So I'll show you how the email notification also looks on this one. So you get something similar to this, uh, like your colleague at mentioned you in that particular workbook. and once you go to that, uh, sorry, yeah, and once you land into the workbook, you'll see the comments with uh, where the where your particular colleague has at mentioned you, and then probably if you have to update that value, you can go and update that value as well. Yeah, over to Kai. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. <laughs> How many of you think that this feature is useful? Yeah, cool, great. Thank you. So we talked about collaboration. We talked about working the same document together. But what happens when two people, two or more people, work at the same document together? Well, if one person wants to produce a report on a certain data and like filters or sorts a certain table, it actually affects all people, right? All the people who are collaborating at the same time. And this is not what you want, right? Usually, like. We, we may have one person who, is, who needs to produce reports for a certain year. And, I mean, other people still want to see the sales information for the entire year. And now I'm going to show you a feature. It's called Sheet View. And it actually addresses this problem. You can work today on your data, and you can filter and sort the information in your table without affecting other people who are collaborating and working at the, uh, the same document together with you. And I'll show you how it works. So again, let's say that I have some sales data here in front of me, and, and I have Siddharth. You can see this purple rectangle. This is Siddharth right next to me. Uh, and what happens if I want to filter the sales information by year? So I will just go to Filter, and I will select a year. And here we go. It's, well, it's an interesting question. Excel asks me, hey, do you want to see sort and filtering only for yourself, or do you want to apply it for all the people. So let's say I will click see just mine, right? And, and I'm entered a new mode, which is called sheet view. You can see that the column headers and the row headers are suddenly became black. And you can see this icon, this eye icon at the bottom, at the, at the top sheet. And it means that I'm in a special mode, which is called sheet view. Sidout doesn't have the, the uh, this table filtered as I see it right here. So I can even keep this view, like let's say that I would like to come back and continue using this view tomorrow or the day after tomorrow because I won't finish my report today, right? So I will just save this view and it's being saved right here. I can exit this mode and go back to normal, right? The headers are back to regular colors and the rows are back to, get to regular colors and the icon at the sheet view tab disappeared. And tomorrow, when I need to apply the same view, I can go back and uh, select it from the list. So I just go to a view tab and uh, select the required sheet view mode from this dropdown, right? And I can continue filtering and sorting. So for example, I can go and, and sort by uh, this column or whatever. And, this, and as I said, it will not affect other, co other collaborators. It will affect only my view. And uh, uh, this is actually one of the latest additions to collaboration, to all the collaboration features. We announced it at Ignite, and we see that, it, that people really like it. Uh, what else? Yeah, we have some time for questions. But before we have some time for questions, I, ju I just want to show you the availability slide. Uh, so course, comments, and mentions are available for Office 365 subscriber on production. And the sheet view that you just saw is coming later this year. And now we have uh, like 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes for questions. So you're more than welcome to ask questions. I hope that you like the demos and the session. And uh, we'll be staying here after the session. We will, we'll be staying here for the entire day. And you can find us by our green shirts and continue talking with us and ask any questions that you want. So yeah. It will be available in desktop one day. Yeah, for now it's available only in Excel, on, in Excel online. Yeah. 
So let's say that uh, I'm working on sheet view and I'm doing certain changes, not only filtering, but I'm uh, changing the report, for example, or the dashboard, whatever. Can you speak louder? I apologize. Yeah. I can hear. Um, um, my point is, I'm working on that view. Can I share it on later point? Oh, yeah. The, the moment you save uh, your sheet view, it appears in the drop down that you just saw, right? And uh, other collaborators will see the, this sheet view as well. So if other people will go to this drop-down, they will see the view that you, that you just created, right? And they can use it as well. So basically, this is like a different views of the file that you have, and you can switch between them, like in SharePoint, for exactly. example. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> Question over there. Uh, moment, I can't hear you. I apologize. Yes, hopefully you can hear me right yeah, now. Yeah, I can hear. Thank you. Okay, so when you create this view, is it possible to apply it to the main, like to create it to be permanent? Like, uh, you, let's say you're working on some document. Yeah. And then you make the changes and you save them to a view. And at a later point, you'd like to apply those changes at the main document, like the main sheet, and make it to be permanent. Is it possible to do that or? Uh, well, the sheet view is only, this is why it's called, it's, it's called sheet view, it's only a view mode, right? The, if you update something, then your changes will be applied. So even if you have your filter view and it's saved in a particular sheet view, like view one or whatever, and you change a value on the sheet view, other people will see the value changing, right? So it's all about, think of it, think of it as, it's all about viewing, it's all about sorting and filtering. Whatever filters and whatever sorting you apply will affect only you. This is the whole point of this feature. It's not like a transactional mode in Excel when you can apply, uh, enter a sheet view mode, perform a bunch of, of, of updates, and other people will not see them. It's not about that. It's just about filtering and sorting at this stage. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm no. going to go back to the scripting and I want to ask, can you generate a macro which combines other Microsoft applications like Outlook or other applications like PDF? Uh, great question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I called it Office APIs. I didn't call it Excel APIs. So we have JavaScript APIs for, for, for each application. And you can write scripts that communicate and interact with each application. Yeah. So definitely, the answer is yes, you can achieve this. And again, I encourage you to go to bing.com and, uh, and uh, well, you should continue laughing about this joke. I constantly tell it on the stage and yeah. So yeah, uh, you should go and search for Office APIs and there you will find nice examples and tutorials how to get started and I encourage you to give it a try. Yeah, additional questions, sure. Uh, do you need to share the file if it's already on a shared location? Let's say one drive. Uh, well, it depends on the access permission. Like every file you put on a SharePoint or on your personal OneDrive has its own access permissions, right? If a file is private and you would like to share it with a couple of your colleagues, then the answer is yes, you need to share the file. You need to click a share button and copy a link or send or just share it immediately through Excel or whatever, or SharePoint, right? And if it's in a public location, like every SharePoint team has a public location for documents, then it's basically available for everyone and, and you don't need to share it. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, You're a great audience. You're asking a lot of questions. I really <laughs> like it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is there going to be uh, some kind of converter from VBA to JavaScript? Great question. Well, uh, this is not something that we are planning. You will probably have utilities here and there in the future, maybe from the community, from MVPs, but not from Microsoft. I'm not aware of this conver converter plan, but I mean, anything can change. By the way, one of the, if you have asks, this is a great comment, and, and actually it's an opportunity for me to explain you about user voice. How many of you are familiar with user voice? Well, just go to bing.com and search for user voice. And when I tell, <laughs> great, thank you for laughing. So yeah, uh, uh, when you search for Excel user voice, you will go to, to a portal where you can actually create new ideas for Excel and vote for existing ideas. And uh, we promise to take a look and almost at every idea that you publish over there. 
and if a particular idea gets enough votes, then we may consider implementing it. Right? It's, I mean, I can't assure you that we will go and implement it. But to answer your question, yeah, I really encourage you to go to user voice and just publish a new idea over there or just search for an existing idea that, that is exactly that, right? And we have like 300 people who will vote for this idea right after you publish it. And it's a good starting point. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, one simple or short question. It's like, why uh, or how would you justify or how would you convince the people to move or start using It's here. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. can you repeat, please? Yeah, I'm, I was looking for. Yeah, um, to use Office or, or the Microsoft right now instead of, for example, Google Sheets. Which are the advantages that you find? There? So again, what's the question? Sorry, can you repeat, please? Instead, why to use, for example, Microsoft Office 365 instead of Google Sheets, which right now allows some of the features that you're already sharing here? Yeah, this is a great question actually, and it's really difficult to explain it just in one sentence, right? The answer is not uh, that simple. Uh, well, when I've been asked about this question, I usually answer that with the Office, you get an entire ecosystem of all Microsoft products. Uh, you have Power BI, you have online and desktop apps, and desktop apps, this is not something that, uh, that uh, uh, Google uh, can offer you. Also, when it comes to like heavy analytics, Really, there is no substitution to Excel. Like, try to achieve and work with large amounts of data in Google Sheets, and well, it will be really difficult to impossible, right? Mary, uh, Mary's question comes also because it's like the online version will have this. Uh, sorry, these these online features that you're sharing right now will have the same, let's say, capabilities that the actual software that let's like say, the desktop Excel, one. Yeah, you mean desktop? Yeah. Well. At the end of the day, it's all Excel, right? And it doesn't matter what platform you are using. You can use mobile, you can use web, Mac, or Win32. Ideally, you should have the same set of capabilities everywhere. Right, so for example, get data, right? You power query in Excel Win32, right? So you're familiar, or some of you are familiar with Win32. I hope that a lot of you are familiar with, with power query. By the way, power query is my baby. I personally designed the experience that you see. So yeah, anyway. Uh, uh, anyhow, Power Query is available today only on Win32, but you can start. But you can see that we are releasing it on other platforms as well. So we recently released the first phase of Power Query on Mac. Power Query in uh, Excel Online. This is something that is work in progress already. It will be coming somewhere in the near future, I believe. Uh, I can't commit on any timelines yet. But yeah, Google Sheets doesn't have Power Query, right? So you will have. Uh, a lot of capabilities that are available today on desktop in online as well. That said, we are not trying to copy everything from desktop to online, right? People don't need everything. People don't need all set of capabilities. And we are trying to be selective and we are trying to be smart and make sure that whatever we enable in Excel online, it actually improves your life. This is actually what you customers need. Right, and not just for the sense of copying everything from, from desktop as is to online. This is not the goal. The goal is that, you, is that you will be able, you as an end user, you will be able to achieve your goal and to solve your problem. And if you don't need all the capabilities, all the desktop capabilities for this in online, then you're good to go. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Cool. We have time for one more question. Thank you. If not, let's thanks. Cool. Uh, one last, uh, one okay, last slide, very last slide that I want you actually to take a picture of. This one. This is a good point to get started. To get started. So uh, you have links here to learn about new capabilities that we are releasing uh, in Excel. You have link to Excel blogs, all the features that we just talked about and we showed you here on stage. We blog about them, so I encourage you to go to the Excel blog site and uh, and uh, uh, take a look at our blogs. Helping and training materials, a link, how to become an insider. And obviously, if you have questions, you can join the active Office Excel community and engage in conversations uh, together with other professionals like you. Thank you so, so, so much. You've been a great audience. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Applause. <laughs>